few days ago I received a really special gift. I always wanted to try out a jelly plate and my friend Pam knew all about it and so she went ahead and she made me one. So uh, it's in this plastic box and she also gave me a brayer and a stencil. How sweet is that? And it's a big jumbo jelly plate. Let's see if I need to put this up a little so you can have a good look. Sorry. Oops. All right. And it's a nice little sign too, Pam made. And look how big it is. Ooh. And it's between uh, two heavy duty plastics. And there is also some um, deli paper down under for me to try. Uh, thank you so very much. Pam, this is definitely a special gift. By the way, Pam is also one of my Colorado YouTube creator friends, and she's a very creative lady and has a really fun channel. You will love it. So please uh, click on the iCard and uh, give her a visit. All right. Now, I am no expert at jelly plates. This is the very first time I even owe one or even look at one close up. So I will play with it all on my little own because there is lots of really good videos out there how to use jelly plates um, made by experts. But of course, I'll be back in a wee bit and show you my results. All right, and here are my first jelly prints ever. As you can see, it's pretty basic. I use mostly just three different stencils. This one, this type of tapestry one, I one with big circles. And as you see, I've already used some of them for a little project here. I love the color though. I put a little bit of metallic paint in there too. I love this one because the uh, tapestry stencil actually, um, this was the second print and it worked more like a, um, a stamp than a stencil. So it has a nice outlines around there. Yeah, I really like this one. And that was the very first one. Nice color, so, so I will use those circles for something. Oh yeah, I also used uh, a big stencil with flowers, but it was fairly thick and it worked more like a stamp again. Another one of these. I just like the color combinations. Cool. Of course, these are super, super simple and I'm sure I get better at them as I play with them. This is all kinds of crazy colors. Great feel to it though. This too, I think that was more of a uh, leftover, picking up leftover paint kind of a page. This one is kind of cool. And this was definitely a drop cloth. Now I do want to use them for something and one thing I'm working on, on right now are very simple little pocket books for a um, craft show in the summer and I think these are the perfect size for it. So I will show you how far I got. So I came up with these very very simple small little journals. As you can see they just have an elastic as a spine and some paper you can of course take out. It has a little pocket from the envelope and just a little string to close it. Now because of their size, um, my deli print size fits perfectly to cover one of these. So I went ahead and made two so far. This is the same, exactly the same. And um, I'm going to show you how I do these super, super simple. Now, because I am speeding up the process, I will do voiceover for you. As you see, I removed the metal clasp and now I will just attach the paper with simple school glue. I like to apologize here that I wasn't very centered with my workspace under my camera. So sometimes I'm a little bit out of screen, but I think you can uh, see it all pretty well. It's pretty simple. I opted to make a little fold on one side and also a small one on the bottom and then fold the rest of it over. Uh, those little slits help uh, keep the little pocket open. So I'm cutting the paper to size and always trying to press everything down so I have no bubbles. I fold it in the extra paper. 
inside the little pocket and I will have to extend the flap just a little bit with some of the leftover paper and because the size just didn't fit otherwise. Again, I'm just taking off extra paper at the bottom edges and I'm slitting the paper around the flap so I can fold it over so it makes a little bit of a cleaner edge. I took a few minutes here and there to let everything dry really well between each step. And here I found this cool little pad with small pieces of craft paper. And they're just the perfect size uh, to fit into my little pocket. So I'm just taking uh, a piece which uh, covers the whole inside flap. Again, I'm letting it all dry. Then I will cut off the excess. And now I'm using my uh, brown pit pen big brush marker to just darken the edges. It just makes it look a little nicer. So I'm just using the piece of cardboard to protect the inside. Now any size manila envelope could be turned into a simple journal like this. I just choose a little one. It's just the perfect size for my paper. So here I'm folding uh, the flap over and the envelope in half. I'm adding a hole and then a little grommet. And now I am adding uh, just a simple hair elastic and some paper I cut to size. Uh, the elastic holds it nicely in place, but of course the paper can be replaced that way. Then just a simple string through the little grommet. I make a one knot, then a little wooden bead, and then another knot on the other side. And I make it fairly short, just enough so the little bead slips through and holds it closed. So here is the one I made with you and the other two as well. So these are very super quick little tiny journals or pocketbooks. Um, it really takes about 15 minutes to make one of these. And I think it's a great way to use up your uh, jelly plate print. And because I use acrylics, um, the texture is really nice and you do not really have to varnish it if you don't want to. So if you ever need a, a quick little project or a bunch of um, the same kind of things as a gift or for sale or whatever you're working on, um, maybe this would be a good idea. So I hope it was useful. Bye bye for now.